Pollution's not the enemy if we control it. If it's too high, the people are gonna cry. Prudence, thanks for being our guest for this edition of Inflation Watch. A closer look at Jamaica's monthly inflation results. Since our last episode, Statin has released inflation outturns for August and September 2020. Can you share with us the outturns and fill us in on the main factors responsible, starting with August 2020? Thanks for having me, Tony. I will begin by noting that the inflation performance continues to be within the bank's target range of 4 to 6 percent per annum. For August 2020, the annual inflation rate was 5.1 percent, and this was below the inflation outturn of 5.7% recorded in July. However, this was above the inflation rate of 4.1% that was recorded for the same point last year, that is August 2019. You asked Tony, what were the main factors that contributed to the inflation outturn? For August 2020, the largest price increase was again recorded in the food and non-alcoholic beverage category, which increased by 8% compared to August 2019. The majority of the increase in this category came from higher agricultural food prices, a trend that we have been observing over these past few months. Agricultural food prices we see increased by 20.4% over August 2019, and this is largely associated with the adverse weather conditions that have occurred over the past year. I should note, however, that in the month of August, we did observe some price reversals for vegetables, tubers, plantains, and green bananas. We also saw, Tony, increases of 3.8% and 3.7% in the clothing and footwear, as well as the personal care, social protection, and miscellaneous goods and services categories of the CPI basket, respectively. I should also point out that we also continue to see increases in water rates and electricity, electricity costs. For August, we saw where water rates increased by around 29% relative to the cost last year while the electricity costs are higher by approximately 7.5% re relative to a year ago. The increase in electricity costs, Tony, reflected a faster pace of exchange rate depreciation, as well as increases in the fuel and IPP rates of the electricity company. On the other hand, we have observed a decline of approximately 3.1% in transport-related expenses as the petrol prices for all classes have declined relative to a year ago. Now, Tony, while the annual average inflation rate increased to 5.1% in August, the monthly inflation rate in August 2020 rose by just 0.2% compared to July 2020. Interesting. So inflation is trending downwards and within the bank's target range, and vegetable prices are showing some decline. Did this trend continue for September 2020? Indeed, it did, Tony. For September, the annual inflation rate was 4.9% relative to a year ago, and this was just below the midpoint of the bank's inflation target. I must point out that the same factors that contributed to the inflation outturn in August continued to play a significant role in the outturn for September. In that regard, the largest price increase in September emanated from the food and non-alcoholic beverages category, which increased by 7.5% compared to a year earlier. And the main inflation impulse came again from agricultural food prices, which increased by 15.9% over the year to September 2019. Similar to what we saw in August, during September, we continued to observe increases in the costs of clothing and footwear, as well as for personal care products, particularly items such as bath soaps, toothpaste, 
and toilet paper. In addition, we continue, we continue to see higher water rates and electricity costs. For water rates, we saw increases of 29% relative to last year. And for electricity costs, it increased by approximately 9% relative to a year ago. Again, we note that there were some offsetting impulse from transport related costs, which declined by 2.1% relative to last year due to falling petrol prices. For September 2020, the monthly inflation outturn was 0.2% compared to August 2020. And this mainly reflected higher tuition fees given the start of the new school year and the removal of discounts which were offered in the summer term, as well as higher prices for routine household maintenance items such as laundry soaps, detergents, and other cleaning products. Prudence to break down this outturn for September even further. What exactly does this result mean for my pocket? Sure, Tony. For September 2020, the annual inflation rate of 4.9%. This means that the cost to the average consumer to purchase the basket of goods and services in the CPI basket rose on average by 4.9%. So hypothetically, Tony, what this means is that if that consumer in 2019 bought a particular basket of goods and services and paid approximately fifteen thousand dollars for that basket of goods and services if that if that consumer should have bought that same basket in september 2020 he or she would have paid an additional 735 dollars for that same basket of goods so what that means is that in September 2020, that customer or consumer would have paid approximately $15,735 for the same basket of goods and services. Prudence, the big question remains. What is the bank's view on the path for inflation going forward? Since, in addition to still battling COVID-19, we have now had flood rains, which might affect food prices as badly as drought. Yes, Tony. This is indeed an important question. Similar to what is happening in most countries across the world, we have observed an uptick in the number of COVID-related cases in Jamaica. As such, the economic outlook for Jamaica continues to be highly uncertain. I should note, however, that Bank of Jamaica is constantly monitoring and evaluating economic developments and stands ready at any moment to act to provide the needed support to the economy to keep inflation, Tony, as we all know it, low, stable, predictable, and within the bank's target. And also to ensure that the financial system has adequate, has adequate liquidity to continue to operate at its optimal. As it relates to the forecast for inflation, Tony, in October 2020, Bank of Jamaica projected that inflation will generally remain within the bank's target of 4 to 6% over the next two years. And this would average approximately 4.7% over that period. This forecast was based on our expectations for higher agricultural food prices as well as some inflationary impulses from higher exchange rates. We also expected some moderation in inflationary pressures from energy and transport costs as a result of general stability we have observed in global oil prices over the calendar year to date. Specifically, we were expecting inflation for the December 2020 quarter to be slightly below the midpoint of the target before increasing slightly above the target in the March 2021 quarter, and thereafter remains pretty much around the midpoint for the remaining, remaining quarters within the two-year period. Now, Tony, you have mentioned the recent heavy, heavy flood rains we experienced in late October, and I dare say, which has continued, we have continued to experience. 
This has caused significant damage to agricultural crops, and as such, we could see higher agricultural food prices. However, Tony, we may find that producers and retailers may be hard pressed to pass on these higher prices within the economy. Due to the high unemployment that we have seen that is related to the COVID-19 pandemic. In this context, the bank has maintained an accommodative monetary policy stance that will provide the needed support to the economy as we seek to recover as quickly as possible from this global crisis. Thank you for sharing with us on how inflation has been performing relative to the bank's target and just what we can expect over the next two years as it relates to the inflation outlook. My pleasure, Tony. Inflation's not the enemy if we control it. If it's too high, the people are going to cry. And if it's too low, the country now goes. When inflation is low, stay the penny. Consumers and investors feel secure. And when we find a middle ground, the economy will grow some more. Can't load school fee, can't start out. Granny saving now get not out. And the BOG inflation targeting strategy that. Low, stable, predictable, yeah.